Greetings and welcome back to Medieval Engineers. So I am here again in Gear World, the world that I started last episode when I was showing off the Omni Gear Differential. You are able to get this world from the Steam Workshop. You will be finding a link in the description below. And if you want to see all these specific setups, I do suggest that you, that you uh, take a look at it sooner rather than later because as time goes on, I will be removing some of these some of the intermediate stages that don't really have all that much value in the long run and I don't do this because I would run, off this, run out of space because uh, there's space enough but because the game might start slowing down with all these me mechanical contraptions everywhere anyway back to what we got for today uh, today I'll be talking about flywheels and crankshafts so let's start off with the flywheel as you may have seen in the last episode, this was a setup I already had. I improved it a little bit. I changed some connectors here from a square to round. So it works a little bit smoother now, but still, it's not ideal. As you can see, this is without a flywheel. And you can see it slow down. You can see it uh, jitter around. So it's, uh, it's not good. And this speeds up the rotation by 16 times in case you haven't seen the last episode now let's take a look at a flywheel so yeah this is the flywheel i have come up with this is a small one that is a big one and one thing about a flywheel is well not one thing multiple things so it has to be fairly heavy this is so that it can actually keep some uh, momentum when it is required to spin around and Another requirement is that you actually need to be able to output some rotational force on it. But on the other hand, while well, you need to be able to output force on it, if this force stops, it also still needs to spin around. So this is what I have come up with. It is a very heavy wheel and you have two of these pegs here which are able to touch each other, each rotation, each rotation. Ah, okay, let's just turn on the thing and let's take a look. So as you can see, it's able to touch the peg and push it forward. But when this one stops, this one still keeps on moving. And this is pretty much ideal, ideal because as you can see here, it is a little bit more reliable than this one. It still stops sometimes, but it is a lot more smoother, which is very much what you have a flywheel for. Okay, and now we have the very big one. Well, at least a reasonably big one. Let's turn this one on as well. And let's take a look at the wheel. So, from my experiences, this one runs even smoother than this one. However, it is not advised to go totally insane with the weight of the flywheel because it can have some negative effects as well. Simply because this is not an ideal gear system and this is especially noticeable with this one here so you can see it sometimes uh, speed up and sometimes slow down this means that certain parts of the rotation are actually much faster than the average rotation speed and in case you apply this to a flywheel when it hits the flywheel at its fastest rotation that means the flywheel itself will also continue spinning at that very fast rotation and in case your flywheel is actually exceptionally efficient, it will catch up with the rotation of your system, which is not good, obviously, because you want it to be at about the same average rotation speed. So I was experimenting a bit with the weight of the flywheel. I think it can go a little bit heavier, but I don't think it's always that necessary. It's fairly decent. Of course, you do have to keep in mind where we are coming from. This is... Uh, if this was real, this would be a very terrible gear system, but uh, this isn't real. We have to work with voxels, and this is the best we got so far. All right, well, let's go on to this one then. So this is another little setup similar to that one. However, I did add a extra thing here to try and shift the rotation direction. And... This is something I haven't actually worked out yet completely. So I got this fairly si uh, fairly simple gear system, but it's not ideal. 
This is actually something that I haven't investigated all that much in. I've pretty much been working on differentials most of the time and a simple one-to-one -one system is actually sometimes fairly challenging to make, at least if you want to have a very good one. So this one works reasonably well, but there are some slowdowns and it's also not exactly totally reliable. If you go very slowly, you might notice the problem. Okay, there we go. So yeah, it's uh, it's stuck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if I move some things around, I could make it so that it doesn't get stuck. But then again, this is when it, things go very slowly. This is not the case here. Let's turn this thing on. And as you can see, I have a little bit of a different connection here with the flywheel. So I pretty much split up the wheel and this uh, little crank here. This is just a different sort of setup. You also have the catch block on the inside over here and this one is on the outside. This is just for uh, different sort of systems in case you want to have more connectors on the inside rather than on the outside. It's, uh, it all very much depends on what kind of machine you want to make. And pretty much the, uh, the issues I had there, so it can't really get stuck here unless maybe one chance in a, in a million. <laughs> I haven't calculated the odds or anything. I just don't think it's uh, it's bound to happen anytime soon. And also, while it wasn't exactly very smooth here, you could see it. No, oh, right, it's stuck. Let's give it a little bump. So you can sometimes see it slow down a little bit whenever it does uh, a quarter of a rotation. So when the pegs hit. But that isn't very much of an issue here because still these gears are quite a bit more efficient than these ones in the back so it doesn't matter all that much. You don't really need perfect gears when the rest of the system isn't perfect. It's kind of a waste. You just gotta make sure that everything works fairly well. Now I'm gonna turn off these things to make sure that we don't have too much physics going on. Oh yeah and uh Something else was that you can see that these pegs are actually very close to each other. There is only one block radius, I think, from the center axis. And there is a reason for that. Let's actually stop this one. And you can actually see the flywheel do almost a complete rotation. Now, why I did this is because if I were to turn this one back on, you will see that it hits the flywheel quite uh, quite hard with a full rotation speed and luckily the speed of this pack here isn't very big because it's very close to the to the axis however if you were to put the pegs on the outside of this wheel its velocity would be much much higher so it would actually not be all that great for your flywheel because you would get more stuttering because of all the times it hits this bag here with the high velocity. So that's why I put them fairly close to the axis. Let's turn off this one as well. Let's just turn them all off. I hope nothing else is running. Well, it's not very much of an issue now. But as I mentioned before, once we get more and more things over here, things might start slowing down because of all the physics. Now let's get over to the crankshaft i have two of two of these set up and one of them is bad and one of them is good <laughs> well let's start off with this one and the uh, the problem is fairly obvious but you pretty much only notice this when you start making it so we got this one so it's uh, it's turning a bit but uh oh oh and now look at it go <laughs> so this isn't good as you can see it doesn't really know which direction to take because when it's at the at the top or the bottom it, uh, it pretty much can go either way this problem would probably be less in case you have a, a heavy system perhaps with the flywheel that has some momentum behind it but still so yeah this wasn't good this was the first one i made or i actually remade it so i made one like this then i deleted it i made the new one and then i made the bad one again to show you what not to do at least in this case anyway now let's uh, show the good one uh, 
Actually, I didn't click on it. Oh, I did. Weird. Okay, well, let's take a look. So now you can see that it actually rotates as it should. And the difference is, you might be able to see, well, uh, these two, these two connections are both on uh, each, each side of uh, this gear. Damn. I should have thought about this a bit more before I tried to explain it. But uh, yes, let's turn it off. You might be able to see it a little clearer. So these are very linear. So whenever this gear needs to output force, this uh, one will have to go down and well, one will have to go up. And yeah, it doesn't really know which way, which one should go uh, which way. At least not uh, in uh, the directions. But with this one, it doesn't really have a choice because one of them will go up or down and one of them will go left or right and that means that one of them will always push around the other so they kind of follow each other like a snake and this makes sure that everything rotates properly yeah and i'm a i'm far from an expert with all of this stuff i'm not an engineer i'm not a mechanic and i do, don't even have a car so <laughs> i'm pretty much making this all up as i go but uh, this one works, this one doesn't in this system. I guess this is something that you should be aware of. Anyway, I guess that'll be it for this one. As I mentioned, you can find all of this on Gearworld, which you can get from the workshop. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.